So I want to look at the issue of the control uh, of why people get obese in two contexts. The inner control system, which is within us, and that larger environmental control system, which has enormous impacts, as I'll try to show you a, a, little, bit, uh, a, a little bit later in a socioeconomic perspective, not a, a biomedical one. But let me begin with this model uh, and look at genetic factors. You've had some wonderful genetics talks I saw from the program uh, yesterday, so I, I will only do a bit of it. Uh, and the first one of these is, is part of the pictures from this wonderful monograph by Boryasen uh, about 50 years ago. And it's clear that the fraternal twins on the top are very di different uh, compared to the monozygotic identical twins below. And the heritability estimates from their studies and most others using identical twins are about 75%. So it's clearly a, a common enough disease. Um, the question is whether that might have changed because our environmental issues factors have changed a lot. And Wardle set out to examine that question with the uh, twins early development study consisting of a little over 5,000 uh, twins in, in, in England uh, from 1990 on. So it's 35 years after Boryasen's paper. The heritability in her twins was essentially the same as it was in the earlier ones, and in fact, in the Newman study in the 1930s on identical twins in obesity. So this is uh, this uh, uh, high heritability for obesity uh, for body mass index. The only thing that's higher is height, and that's only a little bit more than body mass index. So it's clear that if uh, you are fat and you have an identical twin, that identical twin has a very high risk of being fat. If you are not fat and you have an identical twin, Likewise, the risk is not uh, very high. Um, the, so the genetic influence, oh, it's on, on, on body mass index, but it's also on weight circumference. And there are some clear interactions with these because of their associations. Um, there are a lot of genes involved in this genetic basis. And I've taken this figure from Willer uh, showing the effects of increasing numbers of uh, genes identified from the genome-wide association studies showing that there's about a one and a half BMI unit if you go from less than three to more than 13 of these uh, factors. So genetics clearly underpin what we've been seeing for 30,000 years or so. Uh, but there's clearly an, a, 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 another environmental component, and that's the family. And I, I think this uh, plot, which Ruth Luce did, which she was here, she talked yesterday. Is she still here? Because I want to commend her for this wonderful redrawing of, of, of Bob Whitaker's uh, data. The blue are, are the individual status at various ages, infancy at the top, then age three to five, five to eight. And you can see that if you were fat at childhood and you didn't have fat parents, you are not likely to be fat. There's no increased probability of that. However, as you get older and you're fat without fat parents, your probability remains much higher. You can see the odds ratios over here. And in adolescence, it's 17.5. That's a very high odds ratio. The uh, one parent versus no parents, or two parents versus no parents, are the yellow and red. You can see that for the younger child, the one or two parent difference is very clear. If you've got both parents who are fat, you've got a very high odds ratio of being fat, independent of what your weight is in infancy. Uh, and that influence diminishes uh, over the age of these children. So that the child's weight becomes predominant, the parental influence becomes substantially uh, less. Uh, I did put in one about the Prader-Willi syndrome and its comparison with a few others, but uh, that's just a summary which you have no doubt uh, seen. 